Hello everybody, my name is Joey Smokey and this is the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chemistry 121. In this episode we're going to be talking about ions. Ions, you say? Yes, ions. My name is Kevin Martin, by the way. And we're going to be presenting this episode for you guys today. So, ion. Yes. And if you guys remember from the previous episode we've done introducing what the atom is to you guys, we've got the same picture up on here, and we're just going to be talking a little bit more exactly about what an ion is. Oh yeah, I remember something about talking about ions. That's right. Okay. So remember that an element in its ground form state, it has an equal number of protons and an equal number of electrons, which means it has no charge. Okay. okay? And, and that is, mo is, is most stable in that particular form. But sometimes, and this is actually kind of a deep philosophical thing for you guys, atoms are going to form what are called ions. And if ions okay. didn't form, we wouldn't exist. And you'll see why in a little bit. Okay? I ionize, therefore I am. Exactly. Come on, chemistry major, give him a hand. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so remember that to form an ion, basically you're going to change the number of electrons in an element. Okay, sounds simple enough. Yes, exactly. So if we have something like this, um, we can see here that we have five protons and five electrons. Okay. Okay? So let's say, for example, I want to pop on an extra electron for whatever reason right there. Okay. Okay. So, Kevin, I want you to think about the relative number of protons to the relative number of electrons. Which well, one has more? Well, it seemed, well, you just added an electron, and I assume this was already neutral, so I would say more electrons. That's right. So it's more electrons. Remember, protons have the positive charge, and electrons have the negative charge, and they have a tug war going on. So basically, you want to ask yourself, who's winning the tug war? So who won the tug war in this case? Uh, that would be the electrons. That's right. So the electrons have a negative charge, which means then that when you add an electron, you have an overall negative charge. Okay. That makes sense? That does make sense. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of this electron. We'll put it back to normal how it was before. Okay. okay. So we have five protons and five electrons again. All right. Now let's say that for whatever reason, I want to take away an electron. Like that. All right. Okay. Now who's winning the tug of war? Well, you just took away an electron, and I guess that would mean there's more protons now. Exactly, and since the protons won the war, what does that mean the overall charge is now? Uh, positive? That's right, because there's more positive particles, so it wins. So when you take away electrons, you're going to be forming a positive ion. All right. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. It is kind of tricky to, like, get your head around the fact that adding means negative and taking away means positive. But right. if you keep in mind that, you know, electrons, then it's not that bad. Yeah, basically just remember the whole thing about chemistry is this. If you understand the concepts behind why things happen, you'll be fine. All right. So, okay. We should probably explain to these guys why ions form. So, Kevin, since you've done an episode before about the periodic table, kind of introducing it and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, these guys probably would recall that this column right here those are the noble gases. Yeah. Okay? Now, the noble gases are the most stable elements on the periodic table. Okay. Okay? Now, the reason why that is, is because they have an octet. Or in other words, they have eight electrons in the outermost shell. That means they have eight stable electrons floating around on the outside. Okay. Okay? And that is stable. Because when you form electron orbitals, basically it's like you know, reading from left to right on a book, and you're basically filling up, like, streets sort of thing that the electrons are flying around in. So what happens is that you fill up one street, then you fill up another street, another one, and so on. And every time you reach a noble gas, basically you finish that street, you've completed that orbital, which makes it stable. Okay? okay. So that means that since these guys are the most stable, the noble gases are the most stable, every single element on the periodic table wants to behave like its closest noble gas. That makes sense? Yeah, they're like wannabes or something. Exactly, they're basically jealous. So they want to become like their closest noble gas. Okay. And in order to do that, they have to either gain or lose electrons. Remember, we can't change protons because that would change the element. But right. we can change the electrons so that way the element can behave like its closest noble gas, which is good. Okay? Okay. All right. So if I take an example, let's say we want to look at sulfur right here. All right. What is its closest noble gas? Remember to look both ways. Well, I would say, well, you know, there's krypton and argon. Well, I would say it's closest to argon. That's right. It's only two spaces away from argon. Okay? Right. Now, when you fill up the streets, orbitals, like I was saying, you read it from left to right, it's like a book. 
So, does it have to gain or lose electrons to reach argon? Well, seeing as how if you were to gain the electrons, you'd go this way, but if you lost them, you'd go all the way back here. So, right. exactly. if I know anything about atoms, ions, and stuff, they tend to be lazy and take you know, the, the shortest path, so exactly. I'd say it gains electrons. That's right. So it's going to gain electrons. How many specifically? Oh, that's an interesting question. Well, argon is two uh, spaces away from sulfur, so would it be two electrons? That's exactly right. All right. So it's cool. going to gain two electrons. Now think about the tug of war. Which, who wins, the electrons or the protons? Well, you just added two electrons, so the electrons win. Yep, which means that the overall charge for sulfur now is going to be what? Negative. Negative. And how many? Um, well, let's see. How many? Well, you did say earlier that the uh, noble gases have eight outer electrons, so mm -hmm. would it be eight? Not quite. So that's a good point, though. So the thing to remember is that where sulfur stands right now, as far as octet goes, it has six electrons. Okay, It had to gain two to reach its octet to complete the magic number eight. Oh, oh okay. that's what you were asking. Okay. Right. So that means then that for sulfur, once it completes its octet and behaves like argon, it's going to have an official charge of negative two. Okay. And that is how we represent that. Okay? That makes sense? That does make sense. Cool. Okay. Let's take another example. How about calcium right here? Hmm. Calcium. Okay. Well, either I could go all the way across this to get to Krypton. Yep, which seems like that'd be quite a feat. Yes. You'd only do that if you wanted to visit Superman. <laughs> Or I could just go like two steps back and just go back to argon. That's right, exactly. And that's, of course, what calcium is going to do. Elements are lazy. They want to take the shortest route. All right. Okay. That makes sense. So if we're going to be going backwards, we're losing electrons. Right. How many are we losing? Uh, two. That's right. And since we're losing electrons, who's winning the tug of war? That would be the protons. Yep, which means that what's our charge going to be? Uh, Plus two? Plus two, that's right. So calcium, when it behaves like its closest normal gas, which is argon, it's going to have an official charge of plus two. Okay. Is this making sense so far? Yeah, it does make sense. Cool. All right. Now let's get for something tricky. Mm. Carbon. Huh. So it's one, two, three, four to neon, but it's one, two, three, four to helium. That's right. It's right in the middle. So... What's it going to do? Is it going to go both ways or one or the other? Well, either way is like essentially the same distance, isn't That's it? That's right. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty tricky. Um, I mean, I will say it could go either way. I guess it just depends on what it's paired with. Yep, it just depends on what it wants to do at the time. Okay. Okay, so then that means that carbon can either have a negative four charge and go towards neon, or it can have a, neg a positive four charge and go, go towards calcium. I mean, helium. Yeah, don't worry, I know my stuff. <laughs> sure. Okay, so carbon can either have a positive four charge or a negative four charge. There we go. Okay. Okay, now back to that deep philosophical thing that I was telling you guys about, that if ions don't form, we wouldn't be here. Okay, now notice that, you know, there's a gain and loss of electrons, things go around, and the important thing to remember is that elements can't just randomly gain electrons from nowhere and can't just randomly give them up without any good reason. So what happens is that, you know, two different things will find each other and say, hey, I want to be buddies with you, let's make a bond. One gives electrons to behave like its closest noble gas, while the other takes those electrons to behave like its closest noble gas. And what happens is we get a bond. Ah, okay. And if that didn't happen, we wouldn't be here because after all, we made up of a whole bunch of chemical bonds, including that hamburger you had for lunch. Yes. And the shape you drank with it. Exactly. All right. So that's ions. All right. Noble gases, valence electrons, the octet, all those fancy things. All Just right. remember, chemistry is easy.